don't sign the honor code, but do we know who enforces the honor code? This is an in-depth look at the hero Valpo doesn't deserve, but the hero Valpo needs, Montana. Montana is in the process of picking the person to take his place at the end of the semester. This task is not an easy one. I'm Montana. For three years, I've been a student athlete, but there's a secret side of me that few people know. I'm the honor coder. Over my career at Valpo, I've managed to honor code 150 people, a Valpo record that I'm extremely proud of. I'm always lurking and watching and waiting for victims to turn in. It's a life that's taken its toll on me and my social life. The honor coder life chose me, though I didn't choose the honor coder life. Today, I would like to interview three candidates to see which one is most deserving to take my place in the future. So let's introduce the three candidates going forward. We have Kyla, Sarah, and Yanan. We're going to sit in on Montana's interview with the three candidates, and then we will be there for his final decision. Stay tuned. Kyla, very nice to meet you. Nice have to a seat. Uh, my questions for you have to deal with the way in which you go about enforcing the honor code and your ability to gather the facts. My ability to gather the facts is superior to other people. I have a better set of ethics and more fair and more honest than other people. I will gather and weigh facts and will always come to the right decision. I am very confident in my abilities and will guarantee that every decision I come to will be correct. Oh, you seem to have a lot of confidence in your abilities. Thank you. Sarah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Have a seat. Uh, so I have a scenario for you. If a student was in need of an A on his, his or her last exam to graduate and their family could not afford to pay for another semester and they knew that no matter what, they could not get that A, would you be willing to look the other way in this scenario? I think that if their family was pressuring them to do it because of the money or that it would not be that big of a deal, I mean, it could be a lot worse. It's not like they were committing a serious crime. It would be okay because it's just one class and it would be helping out their family in the long run. All right, you're always looking for the bright side in these situations. Thank you. You know, thanks for coming in. Nice to meet you. Have a seat. Um, my question for you is, would you be willing to turn someone in for cheating online? Yes, a pawn. What if you had to turn them in in person and there's a possibility that they found out it was you that turned them in? Well, I'm not sure. I mean, I was okay when, some, when nobody would know if it was me. But with chance, someone know it was me would make me don't want to do that. Yeah, the proximity intensifies the moral dilemma when you're closer to the situation. Montana, you had three interviews with three very qualified individuals, but you're not, you do not seem to be totally sold on each of the candidates. What's going on? Well, Connor, each of the three candidates had some flaws. Uh, Kyla experienced some cognitive barriers. She experienced some overconfidence, and I could see her falling into a confirmation trap because of her wanting to always be right. Her flaws with confidence could lead to an illusion of superiority, which is dangerous. Yeah, I can definitely see some of the overconfidence. All right, so, what do you think about Sarah then? Sarah experienced some problems with moral disengagement. Uh, her answer to my scenario showed me that she could, she had some problems with justifying why one may cheat. She used moral justification to explain the cheating for tuition purposes. The scenario also proved that she would be less likely to turn someone in because the person was pressured by their family. And that's a displacement of responsibility. The last one had to deal with her comparing cheating to more serious crimes, which is obviously an advantageous comparison. Yeah, she didn't seem too strong on the honor code. So what's going on with Yanan then? Well, Yanan had some problems with moral intensity when we changed the turning of a person in from online to in person. Proximity of the decision made her switch her answer and increase the moral intensity. Yeah, the proximity always increases the moral intensity. Anna, Valpo needs a hero, and we want to know who you decided on. Thank you all for coming. I've come to my decision. After a long thought process, I believe that the hero Valpo needs is me. I cannot trust anyone over me with so many moral dilemma flaws. I will stay on as a Valpo honor coder for another year. And he called me overconfident? Well, thanks for staying with us through this whole competition. And remember, whenever you think about cheating on a test, the honor coder will always be lurking in the distance.